What's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Riot Comedy Podcast for you, presented by Ararat. Shout out to Ararat Natural Spring Water, keeping us healthy and hydrated over here. Yeah. NBA rule changes, some things we think we should uh, see happen in the NBA. We talk a little bit of NFL, and uh, let's get to it. So, uh, you want to start off with your rule changes, man, so I can shoot them down or tell yeah, you what they're good yeah, I, can't, I, can't, I can't, my, Mine are super simple. I, I don't have a lot... <clears throat> Um, and one of them isn't even a rule change. One of them is just something I'd like to see implemented. That's <laughs> okay. But, um, All right, go ahead. F- first things first, I think we're definitely going to be in agreement on this one. NBA, get rid of the charge. Get rid of standing still and just falling down and being rewarded for that. You should never be rewarded for that. That's a cop out. There's a big defense. one on my list. Re- reward the defense. I-, I think that's the rule that should, uh, the, the most important rule to change to make the game better. Agreed. Um, 100%. Second rule, second rule I would change is we got to do something about how long it takes to finish the last three minutes of a game. Correct. We, I, don't, I don't care if we have to, if, if you intentional foul to send them to the free throw line, give them the free throw, give them one free throw and the ball back, just like a technical. Um, you can't do that. All, all of you got, you, got, you got to do something, man. I'm, I'm tired of watching NBA games. Like, be, We'll literally watch, like, an NBA game is 48 minutes. We will literally watch 44 to 46 minutes of amazing basketball. And it gets, and then we hit the climax of the entertainment, and it's just killed, and it's ruined, and it's a dud, and it's boring. I think and you just do just away with instant there. replay entirely. No more challenges. No more, no, none of that stuff. Not like, not literally, either. just play the game like they used to. And then just penalize refs for missing calls enough to where, like, they're probably not going to risk a Tim Donaghy situation. Because if you blow X amount of calls in the last two minutes of a game, you're fired. <laughs> yeah. Hold them responsible. Um, but, yeah, I like that, too. Was there anything else that you kind of felt? Because I got uh, Yeah, Yeah. Get... But back back to my thing that wasn't really a rule change, something I would like to see the NBA do is um, get rid of, like, two to four NBA teams. Yeah. Cut, yeah. Cut, cut the league down to 26 teams. We don't need 30. There's not enough talent to go around. There's always a handful of teams that are just scraping at the bottom every year because they have bad front office. So those teams with bad front offices, like, get them out of here. I got something that – I have something that you – know, I have something that should fix that. Those bottom four teams, you break up their talent and spread it around. And then, and then like, that would be, if you get rid of four teams, that's about 50 players you're going to have to just not have room for in the NBA. Um, right, right. Which, which would be amazing. It's, it's, just, it's just like whenever they added all these teams, everyone talks about how the 90s talent pool was diluted because they added all these teams. Like, players talked about it then. Players have talked about it now. Yeah. Um, Larry Bird, Dennis Rodman both have quotes on how easy the 90s was. Um, so no, no more teams. The NBA is about to add two more teams. The NBA is about to get even worse than it already is. I love the NBA. The NBA is great, but like, let's focus on making it better instead of, you know, making money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's I, I, feel that, for a I feel that a hundred percent. Um, can you hear me by the way? I can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. I mean, was there any other rule changes you had before I jump into mine though? Like I like the idea of, you know, increasing talent pool per team. I do like that idea. Um, was there anything else that you had on your list of things? That was really it for me. I want, I want to see him get rid of the charge and fix fix what's going on at the end of games whenever it's a close game. And I, I feel that 100%. That's, that's not the only beef I have. Some of my big rule watching. changes, play-in tournaments got to go. Um, no more play-in. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> the play-in tournament... It, it's Hear kind me of corny. Out. It's kind of silly to, to have 10 teams <laughs> Hear me for out. a conference. So what I'd like to do is just do 16 teams make the playoffs still, which is still over half. I think that's enough. I think most people would agree that if you're not in the top fucking 60 percentile, then you don't need to fucking be here regardless. Um, nice. It was literally just a ploy to try to get like old heads like LeBron and Steph in the playoffs who like miss games for rest and things like that. Um, what I'd like to see happen instead is that the 14 teams that miss the playoff, they play a tournament for the one pick. So the two bottom, the two bottom seeds, the two teams with the worst records get a bye. 
So they're automatically granted a top eight pick. Automatically. And then you fucking play for the one pick. Like, one game elimination. It starts before the postseason. Everybody wants to watch it. It's going to be a whole other tournament. We can get rid of the stupid-ass play-in tournament. If you got, or, or, I mean, in the in-season tournament as well. Get rid of that, too. And if you want another tournament that actually means fucking something besides made-up bullshit, then we do this. you got to play for the one pick. And if you fucking it. suck dick, then you don't deserve the one pick because you're ruining fucking players' careers anyways. Like, we've seen the, the Hornets ruin enough careers. We've seen the Pistons ruin enough careers to know that All they right. don't fucking deserve right. it. So my biggest thing is let's do that. Let's play for the one pick and kind of see how the ball shakes out, dude, because I'm over watching the Pistons get a top three pick every year to fucking blow picks and do bad jobs. I think it's fucking super stupid. The, in my personal opinion, I think the NBA mildly – influences the draft to make sure if there is a top prospect in the draft that they don't go to one of these bottom feeders regardless anyways. So fucking play for it. And if you win, you win. And if you don't, you don't. And, and you know, for these teams that are bottom feeders all the fucking time, if you average a losing record for seven seasons in a row, you have to sell your franchise. That's a rule. Like, no I, more... I love that. I no love more that. owning teams for money, all these other fucking things. I don't care. Get some people in here that actually want to win. And... To incentivize some of these teams to be better as well, every team that makes the playoffs the next season, they get an extra mid-level exception. They get that extra $13 million player that they can add with no hit to their cap whatsoever. That way, I like that. teams that go to the playoffs get better. Now, you don't get to stack those. You don't get one and then you get another one. So if you make the playoffs 10 years in a row, you get 10 of them. But if you make the playoffs, you get an extra one. That way, teams like the Warriors can add, for instance, like another Buddy Heald type of character on a $13 million contract and things like that. But if you make the playoffs, you get a whole nother fucking good good starter or good bench player with no hit to your tax. You don't pay taxes if you're over the salary cap on it, anything like that. And that incentivizes people to keep getting better once they've made the playoffs as well without any ramifications. So shift the, all the playoffs, I, I kind great. of. I think that's great. I, I actually did have one more rule. Uh, I was reminded by what you were talking about here. Yeah. Now, if I think your idea is the better idea to have the teams who miss the playoffs have a single elimination tournament for the one pick, I think that's the best, the best way to determine who gets the one pick. But the NBA is never going to do that. Mm -mm. So the rule, the rule that I would want to see changed is if you finish in the bottom three teams in the league, you can't have a top three pick. Bottom three teams are disqualified from the top three picks. Yeah, you got to work your way out of that yourself. So, so those teams that are four to fourteen, you guys are in the draft lottery. Teams one through three, you can't have a top three pick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not even mad at it because I think everybody's super overseeing uh, the Pistons, and you know, and like keep getting these picks, right? I think it's really, yeah. really frustrating because. You know, I would have loved to have seen Cade Cunningham go to a team that actually knows how to draft players and actually put talent around Definitely. him and, and do more things than, like, to sign Tobias Harris as a veteran. Like, I'd, I'd like to see somebody else have him. I think Cade Cunningham's a good player, but we'll never really truly know because he'll never sniff the playoffs as a Detroit Piston, I don't think. Especially whenever you – like, this is the longest fucking rebuild I've ever seen. Like, the Detroit Pistons are fucking awful. Like, the Houston Rockets rebuilt really, really fast. Like – the Orlando Magic, they took a long time to rebuild, but they would at least sniff the playoffs here and there. I couldn't tell you the last the last time the Detroit Pistons sniffed the playoffs might have been when Blake Griffin was there. And that's been fucking forever. So it's them in particular. And it was the Timberwolves for a long time, too. Like, these teams don't deserve this shit, and I'm super over it. So I would like to see that. And another rule change um, that I would like to see is... Where is it on my list? Um... No more, no more Nike making jerseys. Oh God, please! That's just a please. personal preference. Doesn't affect the league, please. but your, your jerseys are trash. Please. Super over, please. super please. over. Uh, the city edition jerseys you guys put out. I'm super over everything you guys do. But you guys are trash at it. Who's Nike? Who who is designing these Nike jerseys in the NBA that look like AAU, like like some high school kids design their jerseys themselves? It looks like I got them at the swap meet in St. Louis. That's what it looks like. Janky shit. And don't get me wrong, I ain't knocking that. I bought plenty of shit. Bought, bought, bought plenty of shit from there. But they ain't supposed to be on an NBA court. So those are those are the big rule changes that I have, man, especially the one pick, playing for the one pick. And I would like to see the first round of the playoffs go back to a best of five. I don't think we need seven games every single series. I think it's super long. 
I don't think we need it. Um, and do away with uh, Eastern Conference Finals MVP, Western Conference Finals MVP. Like, Magic and Larry Bird deserve fucking better awards than the team that po- – getting an award for possibly getting second place in the league. Larry and Magic both deserve better than that. I don't care what anybody says that that's the case. Um, those are all the rule changes that I have, though. I think that uh, – I think if we could implement three rule changes across the board, that would be the best between both of ours. I would like losing an NBA team. If you have a losing record for seven seasons, I wouldn't even care if we brought it down to five. Because all you got to do is have two winning records in that time span and barely play 500 basketball and you won't lose your team. Um, no charge. No more just running into players and they get the ball back because they were too pussy to try to toss it. Um, and playing for the one pick. Um and, like, the NBA can say that, like, well, we would never do that, but there's no downside to the NBA whatsoever if they do this. There's zero downside. Literally, teams that barely miss the playoffs that you say, man, if they just had another all-star, like, they'd be pretty good, right? Like, the Hawks with Trey Young. Like, you could literally get the one pick and trade it and pair somebody up with Trey Young or trade Trey Young, which they should have done this year in the offseason because they kind of lucked out with both. They kind of got the luck that they really, really wanted, and they fucking blew it, like always, because Atlanta's like... Atlanta, like, I go on forever about Atlanta. Like, they haven't lost more than 36... Like, they haven't won... It's something weird. Like, for, like, the last five or six years, they've won between, like, 36 and 45 games or something like that, which is purgatory in the NBA. But it'd be nice if Trey Young could go out there and hoop and go get himself a running mate. Like, that. if you want a running mate so bad, go out there and win the fucking... You only have to win one game at a time. Like, when LeBron got hurt for the Lakers and, like, they barely missed the playoffs, if they would have got into that tournament, they would have won the one pick and LeBron could have traded it for somebody really good. And now the Lakers are must-see TV again. So, it, it, it like, it Absolutely. literally works Absolutely. out for everybody. Literally everybody. So, I have a hard time believing. Like, the Warriors would have been able to play for the one pick this year. Right. That's phenomenal. Awesome. The Phenomenal basketball to watch. They could trade the one pick. Go get somebody like a Zach Levine. And if you trade away all your fucking first-round picks, this is your pick still. This is still your pick if you get the one. <laughs> yeah. So, like, and then that, and then your first-round pick will just – because I think what they should do also um, to add a little bit more juice to some of these things is if you do keep the in-season tournament, if you win it, you get the 31st pick of the draft. Like, there's an extra pick every first round, and you get it if you win the in-season tournament. You get it. That's your fucking pick to trade. Do whatever you want with. The in-season tournament's done before the trade deadline. You, boom, you have an extra pick immediately in the first round. You can trade at the trade deadline or keep or whatever. And it gets one more guy. I, into I like the that. We, we need higher stakes. Higher we, stakes for the in-season tournament. For, for, sure. for everything, dude. And if, like, because people are going to say, like, well, if you're LeBron, why would you play for the one pick if, you, if your team missed the playoffs? Because you can trade that for a good player. And just set it up to where, like, every time you win a fucking game in that in that before in that little play for the one pick tournament get two hundred fifty thousand dollar check every team that every game you win so if you win all fucking three rounds four rounds whatever it would be you making 750 grand to a million dollars and people can say that's no money to lebron it's not about lebron it's about everybody else like i forgot who i think it was christian wood who said that like that right. NCAA and, and every NBA player don't make 50 million bucks man some of these dudes are out here playing for on like like two, three, four million dollar contracts, an extra seven hundred fifty grand. And I could be wrong about the player that said this, but I think it was Christian Wood when the Lakers won the end season tournament. I forgot everybody got like a million bucks or some shit, half a million bucks or something. And he bought his mom a house. Yeah. So like my mom's in like a, a yeah. fully paid off crib for on a bonus. Like this is my bonus. Right. So like right. I didn't give her any of my money. I invested all the money I wanted to invest still. Everything I planned on doing with the five, six, seven, three million dollars, whatever he made last year, he still got to do that with that. And all the rookies. Like, these guys who are rookies on the squad, I'm going to make four hundred grand this year. Boom. Here's a fucking million right. bucks. Like, that's life-changing money. So do the same thing. Um, and I wouldn't even care if we kept the in-season tournament for an extra first-round pick and we did the play and we did the tournament at the end of the season. Give everybody, like, a five-day break before the postseason starts. Let's everybody rest these knees up for four or five days. And then, mm-hmm. boom, you're good to go. You're good to go. Everything is fine. And we got to watch really good basketball in the meantime before this started. And there's actually stakes there. Like, there's like the stakes are high for the one pick. So yeah, I, really like, I really like that rule change. It's been something that I've talked about for years. I think it, like, just let me run the NBA, and I think that I'll make it a better. 
I think that'll make it better, and it won't include maybe we put a team in Europe. That way they have to fly all the time. So that that's kind of what I would do for the NBA. Uh, Ryan team. Comedy should definitely be the commissioner of the NBA. We would have that shit. On awesome. point. We'd have that shit super on awesome. point, dog. So, you know, the NBA rule changes, they're probably not going to happen. Some things that are happening right now. NFL is, like, in pretty much full swing. Like, we talk about it all the time. I remember bringing it up in one of our first NFL podcasts about, like, who's good, who's not, what are we going to see, what are we not going to see. And we, and I kept saying, we don't fucking know shit till week six. Week six, week seven of the NFL seasons when shit gets real motherfucking real and we get to see who's actually good. Um... Somebody I'd like to apologize to right out the gate was I was not a Minnesota Vikings believer. One of our podcasts when they were 2-0, and 3-0, oh, mm-hmm. and oh, I was like, don't trust them. Don't trust them at all. But it's, it's time, dude. It's time to trust these guys. Um, they have the best wide receiver in football. Brian, Brian Flores with that defense in Minnesota is fucking balling out. Shout out, shout out Sam Darnold. Wow. Wow, they're... They are good. Like I don't know. I don't think they're Do you a think legit. They are a legitimate threat to win the NFC. I don't. I don't think so. Me personally. Um, but the NFC is not very good. So I guess you could it's say not, that it's like open, not open. it's wide. It is. It's wide. It's wide open. Now I do think San Francisco is going to start playing better football. Like because we've seen some of the pretenders now. Like I was never a big believer in the Seahawks. Here they are. Right back, right back to reality. Shooting, playing right around 500 football. Saints wasn't a big believer in them either. Buccaneers wasn't a big believer in them. So a lot of these teams that we saw the first two or three weeks, and we're like, oh, Baker Mayfield, my and Derek Carr in the MVP <laughs> conversation the first two weeks. Like we all knew what was actually going to happen to these teams. Um, I'm not surprised by any of this. I am surprised by Minnesota playing as good as they're playing, and it's their their defense is spectacular. And Justin Jefferson is about as good of a wide receiver as I've ever seen. So I do want to shout them out. So, I mean, as far as you've been watching this NFL season, I I mean, who are legit contenders in the NFC? Because we'll start with the NFC, maybe go to the AFC. I think we know a lot about the AFC. We know the Ravens and Chiefs are fucking super good. Texans are good. But what is going to happen in this wildly shaky NFC? The NFC, I think, is... It's very up for grabs. I wouldn't be surprised if Minnesota won the NFC based on how average the NFC is as a whole yeah. right now. Um, I wouldn't... Th- this this is how regular the NFC is right now. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions won the NFC. And I know the Lions are good, but they're still the Lions. And you would never, under any circumstances, pick the Detroit Lions to win the NFC championship just based on history. I don't care how much talent they have. I don't care who their coach is. Some franchises are just doomed, and they're one of them. But yeah. this is a year, if there was ever a year that Detroit could win the NFC, this is it. Now, do I think they will? No, but I think they could. I think they have to do it this year. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. But the interesting thing is, like, they play in the best division in football right now, as far as the NFC goes. Yeah. Uh, Vikings, Green Bay, Detroit, they're all good, man. Like, I – like. Green Chicago's Bay. Chicago's not bad. And Chicago's decent. Chicago's definitely decent. So that's definitely the best division in the NFC. You know, I, I think the most interesting team in the NFC right now for me is the Commanders. And the reason that I say that is because they have a huge benefit. of Their quarterback's never been seen in the NFL before. So it makes it much harder, like, because you'll be able to see certain things. Like, you can, of course, game plan for them at the end of the season. We got, you know, 17 games of watching these fools. Now we're in the playoffs. All these things kind of come to fruition when it comes to watching a team play football. But it's not the same as seeing some guy two, three years in the NFL, getting a game plan for that, kind of figuring out how they operate, figuring out this uh, Cliff Kingsbury offense that they have in Washington. Shout out Dan Quinn, fucking Cliff Kingsbury. You know, you guys... Shout out to y'all. Y'all turned around a, a terrible, terrible franchise in a matter of, like, fucking three months. So shout out y'all. Shout out your front they office. Like they, but... could win. they look like they could win the NFC. They've been looking really good. Jaden Daniels is the real deal. So far. So far he's the real deal. You know, it's, it's hard so to say. It, it is really. Because, I mean, like, him out. RG3 was the real deal for a little bit, and everybody's like, well, he can't really read defenses. If his first option's not open, then, like, just play the run and, like, kind of man up on the best wide receiver, and, and he'll flounder a little bit. I don't think that's the case for for, for Jaden. His deep ball is really legit. RG three wasn't RG three wasn't a pocket quarterback, so and it's McDa- different for those guys. And and Jaden Daniels, like this motherfucker, can throw a deep ball really really well. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, he's good. And it's interesting, you know, he, he runs the ball pretty well. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. Like, he plays in – I don't know. I, 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 I want to reserve myself to hold back till like, week 10 or <laughs> yeah, 11. Same. Till okay, I really get to see I got things really talking about him, but I'm like, eh, let, let, me, let me give him some more time before I give him too much praise. Cause well, what I'm worried about, too, is, yeah. like, unfortunately for him, you know, he plays in professional sports. And also, you're a black quarterback. So, like, people are going to build him up as high as they can right now. And I think at least half these people building him up can't wait to shit on him if he doesn't succeed. Like, that's why they build up athletes. Yeah. Is so they can build them up, build up a storyline, and then just fucking tear them down. So I don't want to be that person that's like, oh, Jaden Daniels is like an MVP caliber player, and then like week 11, week 12, I'm like, he's not quite as good as we thought because he's still a rookie, dude, and I don't want to shit on this dude. You're doing great things in the NFL, I'm not, and I'm not going to do that to him. I'm not going to build you up and shit on you because give this dude some time. I mean, if you're going to shit on somebody, wait till year three, year four before we start shitting on cats, man, because like, Look at Sam Darnold. Like, dude's playing good football. Look at Geno Smith. Dude's playing good football. Like, I think we need to point the finger at organizations a little bit more. I think that we need to give these dudes a break. And like I said, Jaden Daniels, black athlete, they're going to build you up. And they're, like, I hope people are preparing him for it um, already out the gate. Because if he doesn't keep playing great football, uh, they're just going to they're just gonna tear him down. And I don't want to see that. But I think the Commanders are a really interesting team in the NFC. I think the Niners are always going to be there. Like once they get healthy, once everything starts rocking and rolling, yeah. I think they'll be fine. But I do think Detroit's going to win the NFC. I think that they're one of few teams in the NFC that's been truly battle tested and mm-hmm. seeing what it's like to get close and then not make it. Like I think Green Bay's a year away. I think Minnesota's a year away. Especially since Minnesota, you only pay Sam Darnold one year, ten mil. Like if he comes back as your quarterback, are you going to have to shell out forty million bucks? Or are you going to say, no thanks, like we'll find another guy that we can put into this scheme yeah. and figure it out? I don't know what your game plan is there because are you going to dedicate $70, $80 million to Justin Jefferson and Sam Darnold? I would say you probably shouldn't. But, because I mean, I, I don't think Sam Darnold's going to continue to play this good of football all season. I'd, I'd be shocked if he wasn't top three in MVP voting at the end of the season. I think he comes back to earth, plays good football, not great. I think we have another Kirk Cousins on our hands situation here, probably, which is yeah. fine. Like if you have the number one, if you have a top three defense and you have you know Josh you know, and you have a good running back like they do, I think that they have a really good chance of uh, making a deep run. But I, I like Detroit. I think that they have the most complete football team. I think that their coach has them prepared to play really hard, knows football in the playoffs. But that's kind of what I see coming out of the NFC. That's my pick. I, I, I can get down with all that. What about um, a- AFC? We're a handful of weeks in now. I know I was a handful of weeks ago after like two games in. I was like, yeah, the Bills look like they're they look like one of those teams early from the season that like they look like they know they can win a championship. And now I'm like, ah, yeah, I don't know. They, they, um, they've, been, they've been looking pretty regular the last few weeks. Not not bad, but just not not like what I was talking a few weeks ago. Yeah, I just think you know it's interesting because um, Josh Allen like. Yeah, he had an off game. He was like 9 for 31. Worst completion percentage of anybody who ever threw like over 20 passes in a game or something wild like that. I think that's an mm-hmm. uh, aberration. I don't think that's like who Josh Allen is without a, without a good wide receiver. But they don't have any talent on the offensive side of the game of the ball. Like, don't like don't like their wide receiver tight end positions at all. This was a rebuilding year. They went all in. Didn't work. Had to cut salaries. Like, shit like this happens in the NFL. In a couple more years, they'll be super good again. I think they're still a playoff team just based on how weak their division actually is with no Tua. Patriots are trash. Jets are in complete and total disarray with the whole situation going on over there. I, I, and that's the thing, right? So, like, in the AFC, like, I think we know who's good, and I just want to freeze for a second with the disarray of the Jets and say, you know, Devontae, do not go there. Save yourself the heartache. <laughs> do, not, do not do it. Do not, not do go it. there, dog. Like, please. We were just talking about, about Sam Darnold and Geno Smith. They played for the Jets, and they were terrible. They're in new situations, and they're doing pretty decent. Aaron Rodgers was great, and then he goes to the Jets, and he sucks. Do not go there. Don't go there. That's where careers go by. You have no chance. Well, Aaron Rodgers, like, this is my personal assessment. I, I know he's old, and he tore his Achilles. But, but this is – well, my personal assessment on it is this, and I could be wrong. You know, I'm not, I'm not a football aficionado like I am a basketball aficionado. I know a lot about football. Seen a lot of football. I mean – 
20 straight years of watching football. Never played it. Too tiny. Too, too, like, I, I wasn't taking concussions to not go pro. But, uh, and interesting enough, my school was tiny and we didn't even offer football. Otherwise, I probably would have played and had a limp for the rest of my life to play Juco. So, uh, I think, but I think literally this is what is happening to Aaron Rodgers right now is that the, is that the game of football has passed him up. He is one of few players that I've ever seen quarterback wise where the game passed you up and you are refusing to play a different style of football. Like when you watch these motherfuckers play football, it looks like you're watching a football team from the early 2000s, mid 2000s. Not a lot of movement, not a lot of play action, very stagnant. Players have to know exactly what they're doing. Aaron Rodgers is out here trying to pick apart defenses. And I'm here to tell you right now, Aaron Rodgers, defenses are privy to it. There is, this is what I'll say about the NFL, is that there is no better coaches in sports than figuring out what to do than defensive coordinators in the NFL. Because you've never seen a league every single fucking season make rules to where your job is harder. And these motherfuckers adjust on the fly and still have great defenses out there on the football field. No other coaches have to deal with this in professional sports. You've never seen somebody be like, yeah, your defense was really good, but now like you can't do that anymore because we're tired of watching <laughs> teams score 15 yeah. points a game. And then they were like, we're going to review pass interference because if it's a bang-bang play, we want the offense to get the benefit of the doubt. Only did it for a season because it was a fucking disaster. But still, like these guys constantly have to change how they coach, how they tackle, how they do everything and get their players ready for an NFL season because they will cost their teams games and they consistently do it. So you don't think that these NFL defense I figured you out, Aaron Rodgers, that you're just going to fucking stand there in the pocket, wiggle around, and try to throw it to a fucking 25-yard guy between... Like, they're, they're literally baiting you into these fucking type of offensive throws, and you refuse to see it or believe that there is something wrong with you and your offense because you are Aaron Rodgers and you know more than everybody else. Well, I'm here to tell you right in front of the fucking now that you don't get paid to coach. You do not get paid to do any of these things. You should take your $40 million and list. Well, you had to hire your best fucking friend as your offensive coordinator so that you could do whatever you wanted. And you're not good enough to do that anymore. You're not. And what happens when the offensive line isn't as good? Do you change your offense? No, because you told Nathaniel Hackett not to. What happens when your wide receivers aren't quite good enough to be open when you need them to be open? Do you change your offense? No. Do you give the ball to Brees Hall a lot, who is a top 10 running back in the NFL? No. You fucking, the game passed you up, you're an old geezer, go join Jeff Fisher and all these other fucking scrubs the game passed up, and get out. Because you took a lot of money from the Jets, you got their hopes up, and I think it's pretty funny, but the game has passed you up officially, and it's time for you to accept it or adjust, but do one of the two, because I'm tired of watching you mope around and act like it's not your fucking fault. It's your fault. And that's okay. You're, you're an all-time great, dude. I'm not going to see your neck like you're not, but just accept the fact that, like, maybe this isn't working. I think if he was willing to do it, he could still be really, really, really good. Top ten. If he would just play the way Peyton Manning played his last couple years in Denver, where he's out there carving up defenses, right. but he ain't throwing the ball down the field. He's carving them, these fools up for plays that are guaranteed to get him six to eight yards and he's just marching down the field, taking all the time he wants, and just scoring touchdowns. But never well, did you see Peyton Manning throw, throw, try to throw deep bombs his last year and a half in Denver. Well, they have Aaron a good Rogers defense. Probably, he's still trying to, he's still trying to make throws that he used to be able to make, but now he's right. old and he can't make those throws. And they have a good defense. So, so like, you got to adjust your game to the old man style game. Everyone does it. You lost. You lost to the Broncos, great, dude. Great, 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 great. You lost to the Broncos, right? and then your defense comes out. Yeah. Fire job against Minnesota. They did a great job. They made Sam Darnold look like a fucking below-average quarterback. And if you're Aaron Rodgers, you, you threw two interceptions, dude. Like, if you don't turn the ball yeah, over no at way. all, you guys probably win that football game. You're 3-2. and two. You feel better. Soleil has his job still. And, like, you guys aren't a shit show. You guys are just trying to get better. You average 18 points a game. You average 18 points a game, and whenever you're five, six weeks into a football season and you're in the bottom, you're in the bottom 10, 15 percentile of offenses, that's who you are. There is no, like, we're going to get Devontae Adams and instantly be a top five offense. That ain't going to happen. So with that being said, where do you want to see Devontae Adams go the most? 
and it's going to be like if they get if they get Devontae Adams, they're going to win a Super Bowl. I, I want to see him in one of two places. I'm either trying to see him end up on Kansas City for that Kansas City three peat, or I'd love to see him in Baltimore. If he goes him, to Baltimore, Lamar, Derek Henry. If he goes to Baltimore, say? and you don't win the Super Bowl, it's time for Lamar Blow to give back all of his money. <laughs> you have to give all of it back. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like Blow you are. If Devontae goes there, it'll be the greatest offensive talent I've ever seen on a football field. It will. It'll be the best. Like, And I've seen Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, all on the same football field together with, like, Kareem Hunt in his prime. Like, I've seen that. And this, and these guys would be better. Because, like, you talk about Flowers, you talk about Adams, you talk about Derrick Henry, Lamar. And then you got, you got Lively. And Andrews as your tight ends, get the fuck out of here, dude. Win the Super Bowl by – beat everybody by fucking 20 points. Win the Super Bowl and move on and be a great dog. Like, that's all I got to say about that. Like, Derrick Henry's a stud. One of the best running backs I've ever seen. Lamar's a stud. Lively's a stud tight end, it looks like. Mark Andrews, we know what he can do. Flowers has been doing it for years now. Like, just get it done, Baltimore. Just get it done. You'll, you're never going to be better than you are right now. You'll never be better than you are right now. You'll never see this amount. You'll never get this amount of talent on a football field again, because the stars had to align for nobody to want Derrick Henry. Devonte Adams came up for trade. Flowers is still on a mildly swallowable contract because he's still like, you know, I think he's like his fourth year in the league. Uh, Lively's y- likely's young. Mark Andrews gets a bunch of money, but like whatever, we'll swallow that and just go out there and win a Super Bowl. Like just get it done. You guys have the pieces in place. This is literally, and I don't even think they're. I think that they can win a Super Bowl without Devonte. But if you add him. Awesome. Chiefs getting him. I know everybody doesn't want to see it. But for the perks of watching football, and they said that Rasheed Rice is going to be back sooner than sooner than later, like that's what I want to see. I want to see good football, man. I don't yeah. give a shit. I do. I yeah. want to see good football, yeah. and I want to see a 3 people. That, that's why it's me. It's, I, I want to see him on the Chiefs or the Ravens. I want to see him go to a team that's going to like go out there and bust ass if they get him. Absolutely. Because like, the Bills make sense. Bills get him. They're better. Uh, I think that makes a ton of sense. But like... I don't, and I, I, you know what? I'd like to see him in Dallas too. The NFL is better when Dallas is good. If you pair him and CD up together, like you have a pretty talented bunch there on the wide receiving core. But that's kind of how I feel about this situation. Go to Baltimore, go to Kansas City, let's rock and roll, uh, and kind of see what happens. We didn't get to get into quite as much as we kind of had hoped, but at the end of the day, it was pretty fucking solid. Pretty solid podcast. Hope everybody enjoyed it. We have a, we have a couple meetings to get into, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd ramble on for days. Um, anything you want to add before we go? <laughs> what do you say? Nah, thanks for rocking with us. I, I said like he really would. He would. Yeah, I would we rather appreciate y'all rocking two with more us. hours, dude. I'm a ranter. I can't help it. We'll be back in a couple of days. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. We'll holla.